This is how to turn off player collisions inside of Roblox Studio. If you don't want to collide with any other player inside of your game, then this is the perfect tutorial for you. In order to get started with disabling player collisions inside of Roblox Studio, let's go right over here to Server Script Service. We're going to click on the plus icon to the right of that, and we're going to insert a brand new script. This script, let's go ahead and double click or just click on it while you have it selected. And we can change the name of this script to player collisions just like this because it's going to be the script that we use to disable player collisions. Now, starting up here at the top of our script, let's get rid of this print statement. And I'm going to start off here with a comment. And I'm just going to say services. I personally use comments like these because I like to keep my code nice and organized. And I like to keep the different segments of my code kind of sorted into the different, I guess, classes that they are. Functions, variables, service variables, and the like. Now, starting up here, let's start off by getting the player service, which is going to be equal to game, get service, quotation marks players if you don't know what the player service is it's this player service that you'll see right here inside of the explorer and as you'll see is responsible for holding on to all of the players inside of your game from there let's also get a service called physics service so physics service will be equal to game colon get service physics service. Now physics service is all about collision groups and collision groups are pretty much groups of objects that are used to collide with other objects in different types of ways than usual or just different types of collisions for different types of groups of objects pretty much. Now let's go down here and we're going to create another comment for our variables. And inside of this variables comment right here, we're going to say local collision group will be equal to player characters. We say that this collision group is going to be equal to player characters because this is the name of our collision group that we're going to be creating. And this is for the player's character that we're going to be assigning to the collision group and that way they cannot collide with each other. And then let's go down here, create another comment for our functions. And we're going to say physics service colon register collision group. And this will be quotation marks. Actually, we don't need the quotation marks. We can just say collision group right here. And this is going to create our brand new collision group named player characters. And then underneath this physics service register collision group line, we can say physics service colon collision group set collidable and this will be our collision group as the name one for the name two we're going to put our collision group again these are the two different groups we want to set collidable between them to comma false so when we put the first collision group here and the second collision group that are the same we're pretty much saying that anything inside of these two groups are not going to be able to collide with each other and that's what the false is for we're saying can collide equal to false. If we were to set this to true, then that would mean that they can collide with each other, but we're saying it's a false, which means that they cannot. Now we have that done. We need to actually go ahead and set the parts inside of our player's character to the specific collision group in order to turn off collisions. So let's go ahead and create a brand new local function. And let's just name this set collidable, just like this with parentheses. And we're also going to take the character as a parameter right here. Then we're going to loop through the character. So we're going to say for underscore comma part in pairs. And this will be character colon get children, which is going to return all of the different parts that are inside of the character. And we're going to check if part colon is a parentheses quotation marks base part with a capital P, then we're going to say part dot collision group will be equal to collision group, just like this. So we're assigning the collision group of the part equal to the collision group that we registered over here. And we're doing that for each of the parts that are inside of the character right here. And that is going to make sure that our characters are not collidable with each other. However, this is a local function, so we need to actually go ahead and call it. And we're going to do that by saying players dot player added. We're going to connect a function with the parameter of player, and that player is the player that was actually added to the player service. We're going to say player dot character added. We're going to connect a function with the parameter of character, and then we're going to say set collidable, which means that we're calling our set collidable function right up here, and we're going to pass the character parameter inside of there. So how this works is that whenever a player gets added to the game inside of our player service, 
Then we're going to wait for that player's character to get added because if you don't know, the player actually has two entities. They have their player, which is what you see in the player's service. That's responsible for holding on to GUI and other types of data and values. And then you have the character, which is the 3D representation of the player's avatar. Now the character gets added after the player does. And this is the thing that you actually see inside of your game whenever you play a Roblox game. It's your avatar pretty much. So whenever that character gets added to the game, we're going to connect a function and then we're going to call our set collidable function and we're going to pass the character that added to the game over to here where we'll loop through that character right here and basically set all the parts inside of that character to the collision group that we registered right up here, which is basically a fancy way of saying create. And so we created this collision group, then we set the collision group of the both collision groups which are player character collision groups we set that collide ability over to false which means that they cannot collide with each other and that's pretty much how this whole thing works so if we go over this test tab and make sure this is a local server with two players on it two or more i'm just going to do two for now and we click on start and you'll see that we can actually go ahead and test out the game with multiple players. Now joining my game, it looks like there's only one player here, but in reality, we actually have two different players right here. It's just that that can collide value is set to false, so we can actually go ahead and pass right through each other. Now, if you'd like to make sure that can collide is turned on again, you can simply go back to that script and then set it to true instead of false. However, since the reason why you're watching this video is to disable player collisions, you probably don't want to do that. So now we cannot collide with each other anymore. That is pretty much going to wrap up today's tutorial. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial just as much as I did, please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.